frigid night up there in Sydney. 21 degrees a kickoff. Rams looking to continue the ridiculous run of trips to state. Redskins in search of their first ever trip to state. Scoreless game in the second quarter. Cody Morgan hits Cameron Locke. He's off to the races. 51 yards to the house. Wapak takes a 7-0 lead. But the Rams respond. Messiah DeWeaver to Dante White. He makes the defender miss and he goes untouched. 20-yard touchdown catch. Game tied at 7 at the break. Skip all the way to the fourth quarter. Rams down 14-7. DeWeaver up top to Ryan Lucas. Ooh. Nice catch. Even better throw maybe in the game tied at 14. This goes to overtime. First overtime. Breland Cosby punches it in from 6 yards out for the touchdown. It's 21-14 Trotwood. So the Ram defense needs a stop. They don't get it. John Eaton, one-yard touchdown run. Game tied up at 21. Let's skip ahead to the third overtime. They traded touchdowns in the second. Messiah DeWeaver, 16-yard quarterback keeper. The touchdown run gives Trotwood a 28-21 lead. So once again, the Trotwood defense needs a stop. But once again, it's John Eaton with another one-yard touchdown run. Wapak ties the game back up at 28. We go to the fourth overtime. Keaton Metz, Wapak on offensive for first this time. He gets hit by Beckham and he fumbles. Recovered by Trotwood. When Key Beckham's not doing it with interceptions, he's doing it forcing fumbles. Messiah DeWeaver for the win. Seven yard touchdown run. Trotwood wins in four overtimes, 34 28. Thanks to my offensive line. Thanks to my team. Um, you know, it's a great play call with my coach. And, uh, you know, I'm just grateful for another win. This is what we work hard for. This is what we do. Uh, we go out, we practice this way, uh, we prepare this way. We, you know, we put them in these kind of situations, and we want our guys to really step up to the challenge. And this one created memories that will last you a lifetime. Rams trying to go to state, but Moeller, they were up by 16 points with 526 to go in the contest. DeJounte Bennett delivering the layup, and the comeback is on. Kendrick Mallory inside gets it to go. Trotwood is down 13 with 418 to go. Chris Mack driving, lays it up, counted in the foul. Lead now only at eight. Ensuing inbound, Andre Foster steals, misses it, gets his own rebound. He scores Trotwood down 55 to 49. That's when Karen Wynn finds Mallory. The bump, the bucket, and it is down to a four point game. Only two and a half to play after Moeller hit two free throws. DeJounte Bennett. Tickles the twine for three. It's 57-54. Then Bennett, another three-pointer. Ice water in his veins were tied at 57 with a buck 08 to go. After two more molar free throws, Chris Mack, he misses the shot. Loose ball. Andre Foster gets it, knocks it down. 59 all with 30 seconds left. Less than 10 ticks left on the clock. Moeller up two. Mallory loses it. Finding Kieran win. He dishes to Mack. Top of the key. Hits the three. 62-61. Trotwood in front. Moeller with the last chance. It comes up empty. Trotwood, they're going to state with a 62-61 win. Well, they say everything is bigger in Texas, and when you look at these massive football players around me, that's certainly true. Fans have waited a long time for a college football playoff. Had to wait a year for these massive football players to be made in Florida and then shipped to Texas. Well, I'm at FanFest right now, and we're about to check out everything that there is for fans to do. Well, first up is my friend Mike, all the way from Arkansas. We're gonna throw the pigskin around a little bit. How, how far was, this, was the drive for you guys? Uh, the drive is about five and a half hours for me. Okay, perfect. Are you all loosened up, ready to go, feeling? Gonna try to channel the inter, inter Braxton Miller? Absolutely. All right, let's go. Uh-oh. One more. Have to make this, otherwise I lose. You can hit it. All right. Get it. Oh. Uh, let's see. It. Let's see if you got it. I'll be very impressed. It was still okay. You still won. That's all right. Thank you very much. I appreciate the invite. Buddy. All right. Thank you so much.
All right, Buckeye fans coming from all over. This is Brett from Florida. Eric, I will try to make you proud and channel my inner kicker. But I'll tell you what, Brett's got this look in his eye. I don't like my chances. We're going to have a shot. I appreciate you letting me win out of the goodness of your heart. All right, now I get to put on some pads and do some real football. Well, it's pretty clear to me I'm terrible at all of the football things. I just need to leave that to the players. However, I have one last hope, and that's a real fans game, and it's cornhole. Close, but not quite good enough either in cornhole. Either way, there's a lot to do and a lot to see. We just touched the tip of the iceberg here at Fan Central. Eric, back to you. Important for both these teams to get off to a good start in conference play in what should be a very deep Kenton Trail division. Opening drive of the game, Mitchell Schneider punches it in from one yard out, 7-0, Kenton Ridge out in front. Second quarter now, it's fourth and three. Tecumseh decides to go for it, and that's a good choice because Connor Henry will get around the edge for a 23-yard touchdown run, game tied at seven at the half. Third quarter, Connor Henry had a big run just short of the goal line in the first quarter. He won't be denied in the end zone this time. 65-yard touchdown run. This puts Tecumseh up 25-7. So it looks like game over, right? Wrong. Ken Ridge starts a furious comeback in the fourth. Schneider connects with Justin Conley. Four-yard touchdown pass. It's 25-17, a one-score game after the two-point conversion. Less than 30 seconds left in the game. Snyder to Brandon Davis. Touchdown, Kenton Ridge. But the Cougars still need a two-point conversion to tie and they would get just that. Conley runs it in, 18 unanswered points from Kenton Ridge to tie it at 25. We go to overtime and they are going nuts. Cougar ball first, Jaden Davis, five yard touchdown run. It's 32-25, Kenton Ridge first lead of the game since seven nothing. Now Tecumseh's possession, but Cameron Moore on fourth down will get stopped and Kenton Ridge scores 25 unanswered points in the second half to win 32-25 in overtime. It's a beautiful thing to, to you know that that people thought that that we wouldn't be here but we're here. It just shows show that that we, we can overcome anything. I credit to my teammates, credit to my coaching staff. They done a great job all year just just making sure that we keep fighting and we're, we're hopefully we can just keep fighting and advancing. Even though Stanford is a 10 seed not many people had them knocking off Kansas, but the Cardinal have still played in two Elite Eights in the last 16 years. Stanford's not a Cinderella. Uh, they, they from the big Pac-12. Um, it's just a game. We're just going to go out there and play as hard as we can and play the advance and push all the other stuff out the door. There's one thing that hasn't changed for the Flyers, and that's the mindset. Even as an 11 seed, UD isn't ready to be done dancing in the NCAA tournament continue to win and continue to advance you know a lot of the media likes to give us the Cinderella um, label but you know to us we feel like we can beat anybody and uh, we want to just continue to win every year there's that one team in the like final eight final four that no one expected to be there and that's been our mantra like why can't that be us this year so that's been a big motivating factor for us many people are once again predicting that the clock will strike midnight on this Cinderella Dayton team. But you have to wonder, is there a little bit of last second magic left to get the Flyers into the Elite Eight? Well, they did it back in 1984. In Memphis, I'm James Ryder for Fox 45 News.